uh, recently uh, I had some pain in my shoulder and this is the left shoulder that was surgically repaired. I had a very good doctor do a reverse uh, replacement, right yes. And I've been having a little bit of pain, not real bad, but a little bit. So I went to see him and I had my primary care doctor uh, do some lab work. And uh, maybe you could help me understand some of the lab work and what these levels mean. So I look at this uh, lab work and uh, we did some research and comparing your symptoms because you have the pain. And the pain is, uh, is an indication of the inflammation. So if we look at your white blood cell account, because it's a, it's a artificial joint, so you have like metals there, that's the foreign things. The foreign material tend to cause inflammation. So, and if you do have inflammation, you tend to develop into uh, infection. So, uh, if I look at your white blood cell count, it's a slightly elevated, but you don't have fever and it's not high enough to say you have bacterial infection. And also, um, I think you did blood culture and they didn't find anything. Um, and the lymph cells is a little lower, but you do have anemia for so many years. So the lymph cell has to be compared to other the previous results to see if that's because of anemia. That's been about the same. I always yeah. test a little bit anemic, but not yeah. very high. But then the, the <clears throat> neutrophil, the segment uh, cell, that's also slightly high. So that could also indicating either uh, infection or inflammation. And to differentiate uh, the infection or inflammation, you have some marker. Uh, in, for instance, you have a sediment rate, which is ESR. Uh, you do have, yeah, the ESR is elevated. So um, the sediment rate is a is non-specific indication of inflammation. So um, I I don't think uh, no, that's not a sediment rate. So I don't think it's high enough to say you have acute condition, but you do have a chronic uh, inflammation which causes ESR increase. The other one is the C-reactive protein, and that's another indication of inflammation. And the C-reactive protein uh, can next, be elevated next, when next it's a, No, it's not there. So, so and, and you look at this, it's not really very high. Um, so it's slightly elevated. So I think you do have some inflammation, but not acute inflammation. So, and then if you look at your uh, EGFR, which is the, uh, the kidney filtration rate, and that's increased because you drink more water, um, so, so that increase is good. That increase yeah. is good. Yeah, yeah you, you want it high. Yeah, yeah, you used to be sixty, so and and you are on medication. So I was worried about that. Uh, you know, if it continue to drop below sixty, and that means your kidney function yeah. is compromised. I just saw my kidney doctor uh, a few weeks ago, and and he was uh, glad with my progress. So I have improved over when I saw him six months ago. But the thing with uh, the urine microalbumin, that's kind of protein leaking from the blood vessel. You know the, the kidney has a little, little blood vessel ball called the glomeruli. And when the blood goes through that little uh, blood vessel ball and it will filter through your toxic material. But this microalbumin, this protein leaking from the blood vessel, that means your blood vessel 
has increased the permeability and what caused that uh, elevated histamine can cause the inflammation in the blood vessel. And, and if you think about your psoriasis condition, that's another indication that your blood vessel is leaking, sometimes leaking. Uh, when you eat a lot of peanut butter or cashew butter or energy bar, the nuts stimulate your body to produce more histamine, then you would have more leaking, either in your kidney or that's reflected in the urine or on the skin, which is psoriasis, or if it's in the joint, because you know there is a synovial memory cover the bone, the joint, and um, even this joint is artificial, but you still have muscle and ligaments around there, right, to hold the, the joint. And uh, on the muscle or the ligaments, there's a blood vessel. If it's leaking, then you could irritate the nerve there. So Well, on, on the uh, protein in the urine, uh, you know, I see my doctors uh, when I have to and, and on a regular basis. So as far as the protein in the urine, they detected that, I'd say, eight to ten years ago. So they keep their eye on it because it's never been high enough to be concerning, but it's something that always shows up in my lab work. Yeah, it, it's a, it show up, it does not mean it's normal. It's because they think it's not, a, uh, it's not a bad enough to think about it. But if you want to verify, connect all the dots together, your joint, your, your psoriasis, and the, the leaking of the blood vessel the, the, from the urine, uh, the protein. So if you connect all together, then that indicates your blood vessel have some kind of inflammation. So that's how um, your C-reactive protein your sediment rate mm -hmm. is high. In so what, what, what are you, while I'm here staying uh, locally here in Boca Raton, uh, what is it that you can do to either help control or lower the results of this lab work? So uh, definitely diet is one thing because you're gonna go back to your doctor and for inflammation, the uh, universal treatment is using steroid, the cortisol. And then you don't want to use that too often, too long, or high dosage because that can cause bone loss. And because you have an artificial joint, so um, people tend to have bone loss because of the age also. So if, if you, you try to avoid that steroid to suppress your immune system because that could lead to infection and then you have to take antibiotics. So the main thing you can do is to reduce that inflammation is lower your histamine level. So that means you have to avoid nuts and seed and you have to avoid pepper. You have to avoid anything stimulate your nerves you will release more histamine. And so vegetables, fruit, and even those, you know, vitamin drink, this drink and that drink, there's no sugar, but then there is a sugar substitute. And that can also stimulate the, the histamine release. If the histamine level is elevated, then your blood vessel tend to leak either have the rashes or have... Does that report show what my histamine level is right now? No, they don't usually measure histamine because yeah. histamine has a very wide range. Mm -hmm. So only, that's the recent recent theory, like mast cell uh, dysregulation. And uh, so, you know, traditionally, they will have different reasons to, to contribute to mast cell dysregulation, but my experiences, the food which stimulate the histamine release will contribute definitely to the inflammation. That's number one. Number two, you try to sleep as much as you can, as deep as you can, that will lower histamine. And number three, uh, you try to control your blood sugar because when the sugar, every time blood sugar go up, you would have more inflammation. 
The inflammation could be in the blood vessel, could be in the joint, could be anywhere. But in the blood vessel, you don't see it. And that's how it causes blood clots, it can um, cause the joint pain. Uh, in the, because your blood vessel is your network, it's everywhere. So um, that's how the younger people um, now, because they eat junk, because they don't move, so their blood vessels are inflamed. But they are young, they have strong muscle, they think uh, they don't have to pay attention to their health. And that's how the coronary artery gradually blocked because of the inflammation. And suddenly one day they drop the bed. And that happens more and more in different countries, even in China. So the network nerves and blood vessel need to be healthy. Even if you don't see it, it's there to serve us, to make us healthy.